Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm just going to show you a really cool feature of ODS Studio, and that is the virtual wind tunnel. So what I have here is a building. It's just a, an arbitrary sort of complex building that I created. Um, and you'll see the reason why we want to do this later is because we want to construct a, an airflow network from this, which will be a later tutorial. But to start off with, what's common to do is we need to get um, CFD results for multiple wind directions, or, or preferably all wind directions. Once you have that information, you can start doing quite uh, complex things, um, such as co getting coefficients for airflow networks, um, doing pedestrian uh, comfort and safety studies, um, all sorts of uh, urban comfort mapping, and so on. So we have this building here. Um, what I'm actually just going to first of all do is start up the um, ODS Studio CFD add-on. Like and like I've shown you in a previous tutorial, there's a lot of menus. So what I'll do is just skin the interface, by like toggle skin interface, just to leave with only the menus that, that we actually want. I'll just go to another layer now and actually just go add mesh CFD bounding box. And what that does is it creates a CFD bounding box like this. It's a standard little object. And what I'll do is I'll just make its dimensions about 18 meters tall, 54 meters wide, and 54 meters uh, uh, long. And I'll center it obviously at Z is 9, so that the min Z is just sitting on the ground. I'll then take this little CFD mesh keep point, and I'll just grab and move it to an arbitrary location over here. Okay, You just need to move it anywhere inside of the domain that you want to keep for which the mesh you want to keep. Now we want to do the outside of this building, so we keep it on the outside, but if we wanted to do CFD run of the inside of the building, we'd, we'd keep it in there. I can then hold shift and bring the other layers back, and there we go. Now all I have to do is actually set the uh, mesh layers, which I've actually already done for this model, and I've set level of three, and I've applied that to all of the objects in here. Then on the max Y, I set a fixed velocity condition to say negative five meters per second. I could also set an atmospheric boundary layer if I wanted to be fancy, but we'll just uh, keep it simple for this one. And on the outlet, I specify a fixed pressure out only condition, okay? So what that means is that it, the flow is actually gonna flow in this direction, in the negative Y direction, negative five meters a second, in through here and out through there, okay? Uh, the box has to be centered on um, zero, zero, the, this, this main bounding box, uh, because what we're going to do is rotate this, this mesh around. Um, so there we are, pretty much ready to go now. Um, we'll normally want to run this across multiple CPUs. I've got a quad core machine, so I set the number of CPUs to four. I divide it two in the X and two in the Y direction. I'll just use a simple foam solver. And what I'll do is I set a base mesh size of two, okay? Because what that means is then I'll have uh, 27 cells in that direction, 27 in that direction, and uh, nine cells high. And they'll go down to a level of three on the surface. Now this is a very coarse uh, run, but what it does is it's gonna do 36 individual uh, CFD uh, simulations, okay? So first of all, what we wanna do is actually just um, write the case files and then mesh it, okay? And what you can see there is it's actually just doing the meshing of the CFD. And because it's a quite a coarse mesh, it ran quite quickly. Um, and what we're going to do is turn on virtual wind tunnel there as well. And what that does is it creates this extra menu down here, which now you can set the starting number of iterations. That's the number of iterations it'll do on the very first calculation of, of the northerly wind scenario at zero degrees. And then subsequent iterations, I'll just keep it 50. Now you'd normally want these to be much, much higher, but for this case, um, we're just going to uh, use um, 150. Um, you can also set the number of steps, so this is the angular step size, and you can see it calculates here what that's actually going to be in, in degrees. So we've set here three steps, and it gives you a, an angle of 10 degrees. What that's based off is the number of cells that it's actually stepping along. So we've got uh, 27 cells in this direction, and it's going to step every three cells, which is going to mean that it's going to step nine times along here, nine along there, nine along there, nine along there, that's 36 which will give you uh, 10 degree increments. Um, you, you have to make sure that the dimensions X and Y of your uh, big box that's, that's bounding the domain is a multiple of uh, nine, okay? So um, now we just go um, run 
and you can see that what that's actually doing is setting up the domain, uh, setting up a shroud mesh, and then actually uh, running a si simulation. So um, this is the initial case, and it's solving, um, it's going to do 100 iterations, and it's going to move on to the next. I'm going to transfer the boundary conditions from the initial case across to the next 10 degree increment, and so on and so on. So there are savings that you achieve by actually moving around. So it's a little bit like a moving mesh simulation, but, but not, not quite. Um, so you can see we're up to, this is now starting up the 10 degrees and it's decomposing the case and away we go. So just so you can actually see what that actually looks like. Um, here's the 10 degree getting solved, 20 degree case. And that's gonna keep running like that all the way up to 360 degrees. So what I'll do is um, I'll leave it here and then I'll come back when, um, when we actually have uh, the full simulation. Okay, so now we're back again and um, we're just coming up to the final uh, calculation now and it's just finished doing 350 degrees. And what that's done is you can see it's created this new virtual wind tunnel directory here. And inside of it, you have all of the angles that you've decided to calculate up to 350 here. Now, if you actually want to view this, uh, these results, um, you can just go here and actually just change the case to VWT and go to Post Pro and run Paraview. Okay. What that's going to do is it's just going to open up Paraview to view the results. And there it is. Okay. Turn on all of the mesh and just bring in P and U trans. Okay and apply that and you can actually if you look at it in wireframe you can see uh, what is that's actually happened here and if I just put on parallel projection you can see there there's our original uh, domain there's our building and you can see it's put this circular mesh around the actual uh, original object and then it's put this sort of um, uh, external rectangular domain around it. So as as the calculation progressed, it sort of rotated and and calculated all of these uh, various wind wind directions. Okay, so um, what we can actually do now is just take a slice through here, let's say, and if I put it Z normal at two meters like this. Turn that off and then color it according to that. You can actually see here is the northerly wind case. And what's going to happen now if up here that's at time zero, which is angle zero, so that's the northerly wind. If I now move, you can actually see it's solved for all of the various wind angles right the way around. I can actually just press play and that will show all of the results right the way around. Don't worry about these artifacts on the outside here. Uh, all that is, is in order to save memory, what we've done is mapped the results, even though that was a rotated and transformed mesh, we've mapped it back onto the original mesh. So really the only domain of relevance is inside of this circle, okay? This, this on the outside is uh, meant to have been rotated with the rest of the mesh, but it's been mapped back. But this is all very useful because what, from this information, what we can actually do is uh, extract um, pressures at all the facades, um, pressure coefficients, and we can use that inside of detailed airflow networks, which we'll do in a later tutorial. We can use it for urban comfort mapping, and we can do it for all sorts of um, comfort calcs and, and, and uh, useful calcs. It's also just very good for doing um, development applications and, uh, and, and wind studies. All right, thanks very much for listening.